So, yeah, we got the order because X isn't here. Or, so who was going first and without X? Um, basically, it's gonna be. Where's the link? Um, it's gonna be Romy first. Okay. Romy, okay. then. Then Isaac. How do I share my um, screen? Is it really obvious? Uh, oh, share my screen. Left. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll do that in just a sec. I want to first do a little introduction and then we can go into it. Um, okay. I'll yeah. just step out for a second because I have to do my thing. Yeah. Okay. Be quick, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start <laughs> streaming and. Great timing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Try to try to milk the audience. All right. Do some crowd work. Oh, good. If I thought you were gone. If there is a crowd, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't have a lot of presentations, so. Oh, yeah. do I start now? I had to. Read Not yet. I. Brian will introduce you. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to bring up the five minutes of fame page. Um, on Noise Bridge. Um, okay, uh, before we start um, streaming, can I test something really quick? Yeah. Um, Go. Can you guys hear this? Or is that just for me? I cannot hear if you're doing something. No. Okay, that's fine. It might only be when you are... Um, actually streaming um oh let me share it then and see if that fixes it yeah yep okay so good i that? have um the five minutes of fame stuff open um yeah um Okay, let me double check. I have all of this stuff. Um, cool. Okay. Okay. I'm about to start streaming. Okay, it's going to probably take a sec for stuff to show up. Okay, that's working. Cool. Okay, looks like this stuff is all running. Welcome, everyone, to the 2020 March 5 Minutes of Fame. We are on Twitch and YouTube right now. We right now have three presenters that are about to do 5 Minutes of Fame talks. Let's get ready to welcome our first speaker, which is Romy Liano, um, uh, and her presentation is Sexy Nails, and it's about her game from Global Game Jam 2020, hosted at Noisebridge Hackerspace in San Francisco. Let's welcome Romy to the stage. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, is it sharing? Yes, oh, it is. So, um, yeah, so uh, I guess um, I this is my Global Game Giant Hackathon. Um, um, it's a, oh, 
Okay, I'll start it again. It's not totally finished, but I, I just wanted to make a very different game. I made a mobile game um, after brainstorming with someone and you just basically uh, have to paint nails. So it's like this little woman that paints nails. Um, they, uh, uh, I didn't really collaborate with anyone uh, and I, except for uh, one guy the first night, but he wasn't really part of the game jam. So um, my, uh, I guess my, oh, could I take it up? Should I uh, take it off the, sorry, I'm, it's like the times have been pretty crazy. I'm not very good at presenting lately. <laughs> so like you, the basic idea is you just, um, you have to like grab the sparkle at a certain time and then um, you end up with a paint the nail. And um, I, I didn't really finish the game, but um, depending on how well you paint the nail and finish it, uh, you have like different nail designs. Uh, it was a, It was a global game jam. It was very fun to do something um the uh okay can i stop sharing my screen now sure okay can you is my screen stop sharing yes okay okay so um yeah that was my global game jam my my learnings from it were um it's always good to work with someone i got most of the game design um and ideas from a cool sound engineer i was working with but unfortunately he wasn't part of the jam um, I actually did finish something tangible this time, uh, and then um, I, yeah, like uh, I think uh, some things I did wrong where I goofed off a bit and just sat around talking with people who weren't really focused on the game jam. But that's okay; it's a game jam. And then um, yeah, it's always better to work with someone. But I had the most productive interaction with someone who wasn't actually part of the game jam. And going forward, um, it's like a cute game. I'd like to just continue doing it. I should join with GameBridge and continue presenting. Um, especially in these troubled times, so. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's it. I can't, yeah. are you saying something? I can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank uh, you questions. very much for present. Thank you, Romy, very much for presenting. Um, do any of our other um, presenters have any questions for Romy? No, it looks great. Oh, Good job thanks. of getting some done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Go for it, Mark. Um so so Romy, um what uh I, I kinda missed the part actually about what you were saying you felt like your biggest failing was this year when you did it. Can you repeat oh. that? Um, well, uh, I don't, I don't think I failed, but, um, it, it's always good to be in a team, but it has to be the right people. So I would, I would try to collaborate with people and one person, um, I think she was part of the game jam, but we just ended up talking about her job experiences and it wasn't really productive. Oh. <laughs> so, um, but I, I had a really great interaction with someone who wasn't even part of the game jam. He was just randomly there and he was a sound designer, but he wasn't participating. So that kind of uh -huh. sucked. But, um, uh, I guess. I guess the lesson is collaborate only when it works. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. And the yeah. people you collaborate with are unexpected. Like, I didn't realize that a sound designer would be such an excellent game designer. Game, like, I I'm, I could program and draw, but game design is super hard. So uh, it's like a nice thing to learn. You need to get to know more game designers and learn from them, because it's like this whole other thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you try to do everything yourself, huh? Yeah, but it was better to do it alone than to do it with the wrong people, which is true of everything, right? For sure, yeah. Yeah. But collaboration yeah. probably wouldn't have been productive either. So I don't know. It's it's the same problem all of you have, right? Yeah, it's hard to say sometimes. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Romy, for presenting about your game. <laughs> um yeah, sexy nails. Okay, so the next presentation is going to be by Isaac James on his global game jam game he made with a group called Rope Man. Um, let's hear it for Isaac. Hey, uh, thanks for inviting me to, to speak at this thing. Uh, I definitely can't take all the credit for the game. It was a big team. Um, there was uh, five people, I believe, or six um, uh, 
sorry, might have actually even been seven. I, it, was a, it was a large group. Uh, there was sort of some people coming in and out, uh, so it's, it's a little bit tough to track, but definitely uh, a lot of credit goes to the other people on the team. Uh, I'm Isaac. I'm a game developer. Um, I worked for Blizzard for a while, and I've worked for a bunch of other companies um, over the past uh, about 10 years. Uh, I've done uh, dozens of game jams, um, but I learn a bunch at every single one of them. Um, so I don't know if this uh, presentation's five minutes, but I'm going to do a quick slideshow and then a demo of the game, and then uh, I'll share my learnings. Uh, so let me share the screen really quick. And uh, that's the end of the slideshow. I don't want that. Um, OK. So uh, Rookman, uh, sometimes the MVP is all you're going to get. Um, yeah, that's, it's sort of a like scope-focused um, line there. So um, uh, first, to give some context on the project, uh, super large team. We had three engineers, uh, one artist, um, one level designer, uh, a sound designer, and a composer. Um, so it's a lot of people. Um, also, the, the ratios are not, not great, right? We've got three, program three engineers, um, and, uh, and one artist is like, it's pretty unbalanced. Uh, the rest of the, the disciplines, I would say, were well represented. There's a lot of game jam teams where you don't have a sound designer, uh, and you have to sort of fill in. Um, so it was nice to um, be able to have somebody putting in stuff there. Um, uh, I would have loved to have like a VFX artist, um, but those, you know, those are in short supply. Uh, the game we were trying to build was a com uh, combination of Worms Armageddon meets Bridge Builder, um, or at least that's the sort of concept I had in my head. Um, I don't know if that necessarily represents the uh, the vision that all the different team members had. Um, uh, we like it was it was very collaborative, and um, you know, th there's uh, there's obviously like a lot lost in translation. So like I'm sure different people had different sorts of visions, and we sort of ended up compromising with uh, with what we had, right? Um, as as is. Uh, the uh, as is the way of things. So now I'm going to do a little demo and play through the game. Um, I understand this audio doesn't work, uh, but there is uh, there's some music playing here. Um, so we've got this little dude who runs around, um, and then you can shoot arrows basically. And if you shoot an arrow at this thing, you can pull it over to this winch and fix it. Um, so the theme of the game jam was um, repair, I believe. Um, so uh, that was how we chose to interpret this. And uh, this is another level. You just, we're teaching you to jump here. Uh, here we're introducing a new mechanic. So you can grapple onto these things and swing up. This is the sort of ropes, uh, Worms Armageddon ninja rope uh, mechanic. Uh, that was one of our inspirations. Um, and then we ended up with another, um, another little puzzle. Uh, we also teach you on this level that you can hook onto two things at once. Um, then you can go over there and winch that thing closed. Um, this, uh, this level doesn't actually teach you anything, um, I, I suppose. Uh, you just have to go over here. A little bit of challenging jump, what, second one. Um, and then this level is the, the one you can actually lose. Um, oops, oh gosh. <laughs> um, Oh, physics. Um, OK. <laughs> uh, OK, and then um, just make sure I don't mess this up. There we go. And I think that's the last level. Let's see. Yeah. So then we got a little end screen. Your game isn't done if you don't have an end screen. Um, so uh, obviously, pretty successful little game jam game. Um, uh, we were able to, to make something that works and like has a beginning and middle and end, uh, which is always sort of a, a good good benchmark for a game jam. Uh, does it work? Is it fun? Um, is there like a progression for the player? Uh, those are sort of the first three check marks you'd want to check. Uh, so now let's talk about what we learned. Learning number one is we had too many engineers. <laughs> um, we, uh, we had a lot of trouble um, keeping, keep, keeping engineers busy, keeping them off each other's toes, um, and keep finding productive work for them to be doing. Um, specifically, um, in regards to physics, uh, all the the jumping and rope swinging stuff was all um, all sort of kinematic. So we didn't use any of the like built-in physics for any of that. Uh, it was all just like us adding in accelerations to things every uh, every frame and doing that sort of math, um, which uh, is a little bit buggy um, <laughs> and uh, and difficult, right? And you you end up wanting to share code, but like there isn't enough time in a game jam to really like communicate about how you want systems to work. So people end up just like writing, writing different sort of competing 
uh, little branches of code. It gets pretty messy if you have um, this many engineers. Um, so I would say the, the learning here is you should have like a clearly defined portion of the game for each engineer to work on like right off the bat. Um, you shouldn't have any situation where it's like, I'm going to do this part of the rope, you do that part of the rope. If the rope mechanic is too big for one person to make, it probably shouldn't be part of a game jam game. Uh, learning number two, avoid physics. <laughs> I've had a bunch of uh, game jam games that involve physics, and they're all uh, basically, it's a big challenge. I wouldn't say they're a disaster, but it's, it's, a, it's a problem. Um, so whenever you have physics, um, if it behaves like real physics, uh, you're not going to like it. You're going to want to change it. And then as soon as you jump into that, um, you're doomed, right? There's going to be all sorts of situations where the physics is like fighting against the player input or like things don't feel right. Um, and so, uh, yeah. But so there, there is actually physics in that game. We intended there to be a lot more. Um, we intended there to be like a city full of girders and you can sort of suspend girders from one another and they sort of like reach a sort of tension balance point where you like satisfy the puzzle, whatever that is. Um, but we ended up having to cut all of that. And uh, the only like solvable object is the, the fire hydrant, as I'm sure you noticed every level is you solve like a fire hydrant. Um, so uh, the, the fire hydrant is actually a physics thing. There's a hinge there and we create a little force aligned with the rope to, to fix the fire hydrant. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the physics sucked down a lot of time. It was basically one engineer's just like dealing with hinge joints the entire game jam. And then all we got out of it was the, uh, um, the uh, um, what you call water fire hydrant. Um, le learning number three, cut scope early. Uh, I learned this every game jam, but I learned it again this time and I'll learn it again next time. Um, we, should have, uh, uh, we should have realized that physics wasn't gonna work and just replaced the fire hydrant thing with an animation, um, like pretty much as soon as we like encountered physics and started being like, oh man, this is what is even happening here? Um, we should have cut a whole bunch of stuff. There was there were a lot of unnecessary mechanics and sort of like we were building technology and like just kind of seeing what levels we could have built out of it, but we could have gotten to an MVP way faster if we just um, just stuck with what we had. And the fourth learning is um, juice it when it's working. So um, I don't know if you noticed, but the the jump mechanic. Um, has a little bit of squash and stretch um, and like some dust particles that come out and it kind of doesn't work at all. <laughs> um, it worked okay um, when it was a capsule collider um, and I can take full responsibility for this because I built this thing. Um, and, but then when we put actual art in, he like, he's jumping like, like less than a real person can jump up. He only jumps up like his own calves, um, <laughs> which just feels super odd. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it, it, we should have, like made a jump that was suitable for testing and then like added the art and then made like perfected the jump for that character rather than like making a jump, building a bunch of levels around it and then like slapping some art on it at the end and being like, oh, it looks weird. I guess we can't fix it now. Um, so those are the, the things I learned from this game jam. Um, yeah, I would say it was a, a pretty successful project. I had a really good time doing it. Um, do you guys have any questions about uh, how that went or? Or anything for me? Thank you so much. So cool. Yeah. I will ask, how soon did you have your first like playable prototype? Um, so it, um, this game jam went from Friday to Sunday, um, and we had a a level in which you had a capsule and you could could like jump around on Friday. Um, but I, I don't know. Um, uh, honestly, like we didn't have fire hydrants like. And we didn't know that that was the full scope of the game. We were still going back and forth on the like girder suspended thing that we ended up having to cut, um, like pretty much all the way until like Saturday evening. So we were like, we had to make a call then that we were like, look, all we got is these fire hydrants. It's the only bit that works. Let's just build some levels around that and and call it. Um, any other questions? That's so cool. Yeah, it worked really well. Thanks for thanks for that. Are you guys gonna work on it more, like, or after? I mean, um, or is it just like, a, was it? It's like fun to just do a hackathon together. Yeah, I think it was. I think we just just got together for that uh, project. I don't think we're we're planning on working on it more. Um, it's cool though. It's nice to have it in your library. Maybe, maybe pull out some of that code later. If we uh, if I want to do it, some some ninja rope thing. Uh, I love that that uh, worms ever get a ninja rope mechanic. So um, I probably want to redo it if I did a new game though. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, thanks for thanks for letting me uh, speak. That's all for me. Thank you very much, Isaac. And next up is going to be Mark with the Metal Snail Gear Solid Global Game Jam game that his team made and how that turned out. Okay, Mark, you're up. Cool. All right. So, Metal Snail Gear Solid. Um, it's kind of a funny little silly proof of concept in the end. I feel like what we ended up with was not really a full game, uh, per se. Something it had like technically a beginning, middle, and end, but I, you know. There wasn't much of a like player progression arc in terms of interactivity, which I would have liked to have had. Um, There's just like one single concept level, you know. Um, and I'll just kind of show it here really quickly, um, if I can. Where's my screen share? Here we go. Can we? You can see, right? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. Uh, hopefully this isn't too loud. It has a weird tendency to be kind of loud. And I think when I run this, it might be a little slow sometimes too. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, again, the theme was repair. And um, we kind of came up with this wacky story about a snail trying to feed his little snail colony by repairing the, this machine that feeds them. Uh, and so... There is kind of like a winning condition and a losing condition. Um, but the main thrust of the game is it's kind of like, it kind of, we never really decided if we wanted it to be like this thing with levels or this endless runner kind of thing. It could have gone either way had we been able to work on it more for the jam. Uh, but anyway, I'll just kind of play here. So here's the machine. And you can see it like just kind of stops working and the little baby snails get really sad. And, uh, now you have to go save them. So you can like jump and you can punch, right? And what happens is when you like punch an enemy, you get these gears and they speed you up. The more gears you have, the faster you go. And if you, uh, and I made it and I fixed it and I got a score for like how long it took me to get there to the end. And then that cutscene's broken, so I have to kind of quit out anyway. Okay. Um, so that's kind of like a successful run, like a failed run would be, I'll do it real quick, something like this, where you, we'll go through the cutscene again. But basically, if you don't get enough speed to get to the end, there's like a timer you can see up here in the top left. Um, it's, it's a little small, we should have made that bigger, you know, but yeah, basically if you run into an enemy and like fail to, ooh, you just like get kicked back. Um, and then, uh, you really gotta like be on your game and speed up, otherwise you won't get there in time. And then the machine blows up, and it's terrible. Um, and then they die. Um, yeah. So, so that's kind of like the core loop of the game, more or less. Um, so we had uh, at least kind of that basic level done. Uh, how do I turn off screen share? Oh, I did it. Okay. Um, and while I'm happy that we got something like a beginning, middle, in, I just felt like we could have done so much more. Um, so, so what happened uh, during the jam was uh, this was an attempt on my part to lead a team kind of for the first time. Uh, and in the sense that I wanted to... Uh, sort of delegate tasks. I'm usually like the programmer, game designer, and like level builder. Um, and I wanted to uh, kind of offload that onto someone else. And uh, what ended up happening was I failed to sort of keep them uh, on task throughout the weekend. And they ended up not having as much time to work on it as they had originally thought they would. And so, you know, just kind of like different pieces sort of started falling off of our, our little machine uh, as time went on. And before I knew it, it was like Sunday 
and we didn't have the 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 core like game loop running the core mechanic uh working even though we had some art for it because i was working on art all of uh friday and saturday um i was kind of trying to designate myself as the artist this time because i wanted to practice my uh art skills and um yeah so so i guess you could say i think what i learned is is if i'm gonna take uh two roles on like that you know art and team management then i need to figure out how to balance them a little bit better uh to ensure that tasks are getting done on time um we had musicians uh doing their work and they did fine on their own without direction um but they also had the whole weekend to work and you know so it was also just kind of there was a little lack of communication um another thing i feel like i kind of failed at that i could improve on for maybe the next one is um Sort of, I, I had this idea of what I wanted the mechanic to be before the weekend started, and um, we spent a lot of time sort of arguing about how to adapt like this gameplay idea to the theme when it probably could have been better spent um, just messing around right away with ideas that would have fit the theme if that makes sense, that would have more kind of like naturally fit the theme. So uh, yeah, because I had this idea in my head already, I wanted to kind of push it. And I think at least one or two of my teammates felt I was being a little pushy about it because I was trying to like lead the team and also push my idea. Um, and so I kind of fail failed to be a good collaborator in that respect, I guess. Um, and I think that's the biggest takeaway I had from that weekend. Um, because what that ended up doing was, you know, we only ended up kind of settling on on how to tie it in, like sort of at the end of Friday night and didn't really get any work done Friday night. And then so Saturday I spent, um, you know, I kind of sketched out some characters Friday night, but we didn't get any gameplay done. Right. We didn't even get a chance to prototype our gameplay uh, Friday night or Saturday morning. Um, yeah. So those are two areas I'd like to improve on uh, as far as like what was a success. I guess I did somewhat managed to pull it together in the end and get people to throw everything together and collaborate but um yeah uh in the end we delivered something it wasn't uh perfect uh or even like quote unquote good by my uh standards i would have set for myself but you know we we had fun with it and we ended up with something that we thought was a little cute and a little funny um i i kind of realized after we threw it all together that uh the core gameplay loop needed some like serious uh tweaks to keep fun and interesting throughout maybe multiple levels but again like i think that was just boiled down to the the lack of time on the uh the programming and game design side um yeah overall i'd say i learned a lot um i'm i'm glad i you know got to practice my art skills a little bit and overall had a good time um yeah it was definitely an experience to learn sort of how to work with also kind of like different personality types and stuff since i hadn't really done much of that team management stuff before uh yeah uh as far as like continuing work on it i don't think i'm going to do that um just because i'm not seeing as much promise in it as some of the other uh games i've started working on that i'm going to continue working on so there's that uh but yeah it was, it was overall pretty pretty fun and pretty cool. Any questions for me? Um, uh, I'm glad to hear you did the uh, the art because that means I can ask you about it. Um, what, what do you what do you think was the uh, was the most effective animation? Uh, there's a bunch of little sequences where like the machine breaks and the machine explodes and stuff. Like, which one's your favorite and why? Uh, I think you're muted. Okay, so which one, which single animation is the most effective? Yeah. Um, sorry, got a comment here. Um, just wanted to respond in text. Someone commented on something in text, and they're not seeing the video. So. Um, yeah. Um, there's a there's a couple I would say. Um. The, I really think 
like as far as like the player animations go i really like his jump animation the way his body kind of reacts or his little head kind of bounces when he jumps uh, i think is like a good sort of uh bendy reaction that shows like the fluidity of it um then uh as far as like i like it when i think it's pretty uh it's funny when the uh, when the little baby snails die when you fail um they just kind of like instantly just fall over dead with the cartoony cross eyes you know i think i always i don't know I, that was it was like really easy to pull off and yet i think it conveyed the message perfectly yeah um, i think it had a, had a lot of personality i i like i like both those animations a lot it's uh, the the following motion on the snail head super sells it and it doesn't like <laughs> delay the player input so yeah really great job a lot of personality crammed into those pixels <laughs> thank you anyone got anything you, else yeah did you just meet everyone the um night of the hackathon or uh did you were um um so i actually uh did i'm i met uh one team member before um sorry two uh, no, the answer is no. No, I met um, one team member the night of the hackathon, and that was a guy who actually was helping me with the art because I'm not an artist. Um, and he created, by the way, the um, he created the enemy uh, sprites and animations and the little gears that you pick up and things like that. Um, the, uh, coder I knew beforehand, um, and I said, hey, do you want to work on something this weekend? And he was like, uh, yeah, sure. And I didn't really clarify in time. It was kind of a last minute addition, and I didn't clarify in time with him, um, that it would be like a, you know, constantly for the whole weekend kind of thing. And that, that's part of the failing there. Um, and, um, the musician I knew beforehand and, um, they actually never had done music before for a game and, uh, had a friend coach them on music making, uh, and they got it done, you know, I knew they were a good worker on things generally. Um, so I kind of trusted that they would figure out how to get that done, you know. Hopefully that answers the question. Cool. Thank you very much, Mark, for your presentation. Um, so I now want to, uh, I'm going to do a five minute presentation in a couple minutes, but um, I first actually had a general question about um, the Global Game Jam um, and how was Mark, you were one of the organizers how was it organizing a Global Game Jam event um, this year? Oh yeah, okay so this is uh, my second year hosting in a row well um, so, uh, I learned a lot from last year. Um, it's really, it, once you sort when you know kind of what needs to be done, it's not all that hard, not that much work. You just gotta make sure you get certain things, uh, set beforehand, really. And, um, you know, technically Bernice was the organizer this year and I helped her out. Um, that was Bernice Chua, and she um, she did a lot of planning, um, but but we kind of had the experience both last year of doing it, and there were some things we just didn't we were a little bit kind of disorganized on last year that I think we pulled off a little better this year. Um, that said, one thing we were not able to do this year that we did last year that I would have liked to have done was have a um, guest speaker sort of do 
a guest lecture um, before the jam started uh, instead of what we did this year, which was we kind of watched the uh, generic, the global game jam uh, official sort of like intro video, which was kind of like a guest lecture, but it was not in person, you know. Uh, we would have liked to set a, a, a special speaker up for Noise Bridge this year, but it just didn't happen. Um, hopefully we can do that again next year. Uh, I kind of failed to get on that on time this year, so it's partially my fault. Um, but yeah, just uh, basically making sure that we had food and volunteers ready to help out people as needed throughout the weekend. And I made sure I got sort of like the award things finished before the jam started so that I could just like enjoy the weekend, you know, instead of worrying about doing that during the weekend. Uh, yeah, overall, pretty fun, fairly smooth experience. Uh, there are just you know, like a few hiccups here and there, but n uh, nothing crazy. And uh, yeah, I hope, hope we can do a better job next year. <laughs> assuming, I'm assuming it's going to happen next year again. But we might be in a new uh, building, so... We'll see. Yeah. yeah, another question I had was mm -hmm. how was it different doing just a regular game jam this year around compared to doing the 24-hour rolling three-day game jam last year? Was there more work done? Was there less work done in terms of having polished games at the end? Just for if other people want to know whether they should try to do a straight game jam throughout the whole time or mm -hmm. should just stick to like 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, well, I would say that, um, I think it's up to the person, but, uh, I didn't see any difference in quality. There were great things that were made both years. So, um, I would recommend getting sleep because you'll feel better at the end of it all instead of completely wiped out. Um, yeah, I'll say I, I was wiped out at the end of it though. I think I, I you know, caught something from someone. I had a cold afterwards, but uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think it's really important to to sort of moderate, right? And it's easy um, to, you know, uh, I I have, you know, there's crunch is a big problem in the games industry, um, and so I I think it's really important to um, in your personal life make sure that you're following the kind of advice you would give to yourself in your professional life. So I, I definitely don't. Um, crunch during game jams. I just work on in like regular business hours, basically. Here, here. He's right. I think that's all you really need to do. Um, but I wouldn't begrudge anyone if they want to work all the time. They do. Some people are night owls. <laughs> Sleep equals good. Equals 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 good. That does that I, mean? I like. Yeah, I like very, that this very... game jam doesn't really have prizes, so. It felt mm. very free. Oh yeah. Oh, I you kind of like that. Yeah. Certificate giving session. You oh, there. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we, hand, we handed out prizes. Yeah, but it wasn't um for like fifty thousand dollars. So because no, that 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 changes the vibe. But those yeah, are, those yeah. are good too. Those are good too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want fifty thousand dollars? I know I would. <laughs> the real prize was the games we made along the way. <laughs> yeah. And the spirit, the what is it, my little pony, the brony? Like friendship is magic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perfect. Yeah. Um just for people who don't know about the other um games that we had built at Noise Bridge Game Jam 2020, I'm just going to share my screen for a minute and uh, show the games that were made. We had a total of 10 teams based on the 
um, Global Game Jam website, though I think there might be a few games that aren't up here fully, but there was Abstractor Zero, Every Problem Looks Like a Nail, Fix It, Leaktastic, Sketchy Towers, Rope Man, Rep Air, Metal Snail. Yeah, are you trying to share your screen? Yeah. Oh, is it? it? It's not working? We just uh, see your webcam. <laughs> okay, wait just a sec. Oh, that's why. Um. Ah, here we go. Sorry, let me try this again. I didn't see that part. Okay, um, yeah, so let me go back. Um, yeah, so we had 10 games based on the Global Game Jam website. Abstractor Zero, Every Problem Looks Like a Nail, Fix It, Leaktastic, Sketchy Towers, Rope Man, Rep Air, Metal Snail Gear Solid, Stop, Co-op, and Roll, and Wormcraft. All of these games were quite amazing to see people play and build. It was really cool also to see people use a lot of different tools to build these games. We had two different games that were done in VR, though I think one of them's not up here, but Stop, Co-op, Co-op, and Roll actually add one person on the computer moving a character and one person in a VR headset controlling the world around that person running around. Um, yeah, that was a really neat concept. Yeah, it's it's very amazing that they got so much done um with a multiplayer mixed play style game um then there's games like rep air that spent a lot of time building um character like uh models and like backgrounds and stuff and had really amazing art um, even though it was a very simple play thing, it was quite uh, addictive. It was almost like a um a, um clicker game where you just press buttons over and over. Um, yeah, every problem looks like a nail was pretty funny where you um use a hammer to solve problems by smashing them. And if you fail, if you hit, if you actually break something instead of fix it, but um, it's really hard to get past a couple rounds in the game because of how fast things start to spawn. Um. Yeah, um... Uh, it looks like they had the no-coding diversifier. How did they pull that off with Every Problem Looks Like a Nail? Uh, oh, wait, they used the no-coding? Yeah, it said that on their uh, on their page. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Um, though they... Considering this might have been built in Unreal, I think... Um, yeah, Unreal, they probably just used an asset package and filled in... Um, they can do this with... You could do this with Blueprints, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, Blueprints I is super powerful. No coding, but... Maybe? I mean, vi visual programming is not technically coding, right? So... Yeah. <laughs> oh, so they use Unreal like Scratch or something? Or? I mean... Eh. Yeah, it's 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 node based, you know, code editor. Thing. Yeah. Also, Mark, one thing I wanted to ask about 
was, do you think people enjoyed using a facility like Noisebridge with where we have a number of different things like a full audio workstation area and a couple VR headsets? Um, do you think um, uh, it made sense to have um, uh, that um, uh, stuff available for the community to use? 100%, absolutely. Um, I don't know if... What was the game? The the, the VR and non-VR? Yeah. I don't know if they used one of our VR sets. or if They, they brought their, their own. own. Okay. I think people are comfortable with their own VR setups, uh, typically. Um, and they're getting more portable anyway. Um, that said... You know, had I wanted to make a VR game for the jam, you know, I would have used noise bridges since I don't have one of my own. I would have loved to have. Uh, I saw people using the music workstations over the weekend, uh, and I pre I'm, I'm sure they were very appreciative that all that equipment was there. You know, we got all the keyboards and synthesizers and all that stuff, and the the audio computers, uh, with all the the DAWs and whatnot. Um, I'm certain that that was helpful for at least one or two teams. Yeah. I know that our sound guy was using the, the DAWs. Um, also, it's just, for me, it was super inspiring to just, like, be around all the cool stuff where it's, like, there's a soldering station over there and, like, a sewing machine repair station over there. I just That's a cool environment to be working in for me. Right, yeah. You get to see other people expressing their creativity in other ways. It can help you we, with your environment. We miss it now with the lockdown. <laughs> yeah. I sorely miss it. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. Well, we'll be back soon enough, I'm sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my five minutes of fame talk is just going to be a talking head about Noise Bridge and the next couple months of what's in store for the space that. We are currently not able to be at right now, which is why this is being streamed from people's living rooms. But Noise Bridge, other than having to be locked down due to the current situation in around the world, but also considering San Francisco is under a um shelter in place order so spaces like noise bridge are not able to be open right now um it's a lot of people are really sad i've personally had many people text me call me email me about their need to use noise bridge in situations like this, um, uh, a lot of people who use Noise Bridge consider it critical infrastructure because we are publicly available to do very unique things. We have internet that a lot of people who can't go to a library anymore really want to use. We have tools and equipment that would allow us to build systems. We actually have a number of people who, up until the um, shelter-in-place order, were working on building projects for the current epidemic at Noisebridge. I personally set up a couple computers to start running folding at home protein folding simulations for the COVID-19 research um, project that folding has put a lot of effort into. Luckily, those can run um, without any user input, but there's also lots of people who want to use Noise Bridge's sewing area to 
create face masks or use our 3D printers to create face mask like modifier plates um, such that they can um, use them to um, uh, reuse face masks um, or modify um, ported face masks into um, masks that won't spread germs um, when you exhale. Um, but even with Noise Bridge closed down, um, we, um, have a very big issue separately, and that is Noise Bridge needs to move. We are currently, um, uh, preparing to move Noise Bridge. We are not 100% sure where to yet, um, uh, but in the coming months, we will be looking into the community for donations of moving supplies and other situations where we really could use community help because Noise Bridge wants to be accessible and we also don't want to be closed too long after the um shelter in place order is lifted i know i want to use the space more i want our space to grow which moving would actually facilitate us growing quite a bit even if it's only a slightly bigger space. We have so many people who want to do projects we cannot currently do in our current space, either due to ADA accessibility um, not being as good as we want um, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah. I really hope the shelter in place gets lifted uh, soon. Uh, or when it says it will be, because I want to host the uh, Ludum Dare game jam um, at Noisebridge also. Yeah. Which it, is happening April 17th. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot that people want to do. I know originally this weekend I was going to try to live stream a full playthrough of Half Life Alex. Um, uh, from Noise Bridge, from our VR system, um, because we have a public VR system that anyone can use for free for as long as they want and also use it to develop their own VR games. Um, uh, yeah, it not having Noise Bridge is something a lot of people like are really sad about right now. I do know people are working on trying to find out if we can work on critical infrastructure tasks during this situation and what um, stuff we would need to do with the city to be allowed to do that. Um, but for the foreseeable future, Noise Bridge will be closed. Um, at least until the ordinance is over. And I want to make sure people know that even though we're closed, we are not going to be stopping certain things. We're still working on preparing for our move. We're still hosting events like this, um, uh, it, though they aren't at Noise Bridge, but Noise Bridge is more than just a space. It's a community. It's an idea. There, the first couple months of Noise Bridge's existence, Noise Bridge didn't have a space. It was held in people's houses in San Francisco until we got our first location. I wasn't around back 
then uh, as a part noise bridge, but um the couple people who were they're like noise bridge will never die. We are a system that is able to live on in the internet, in the community, and through people's actions that are taken every day. People who worked on projects there are now working on projects at home or at other communities. We will be fine um, for any of the community that's ever been worried that Noise Bridge is in a tough place. We're we're in a unfun place. We'd love to be having a lot more fun just being at Noise Bridge, hacking on projects, building stuff, teaching, but right now it's critical that we make sure we have enough funds and enough community to do the move that we're going to have to do all the while having to also deal with the current epidemic um okay that's it i definitely went over yeah Thanks, i'd love uh question get loud oh sorry yeah. no my bad i just wanted to say where can people participate online ryan and noise bridge goings on yeah yeah, so a couple of the best places for noise bridge people to get involved with noise bridge right now is our website and uh, our wiki, our discuss, and our Slack. I, I'll post them on um uh, in the chat right now which people can see I have a question could we just keep this um, Jitsi meet channel open at all times and then anyone could just drop in and use this yeah that that might be a good idea like right now um, this is being used for five minutes of fame, but I did notice that if you change the URL, you can open multiple meetings um, all at the same time for different groups. It's really cool. Like, I should have originally sent um, set this up as a... Um, Jitsi eating noise bridge five minutes of fame so that I wouldn't be impacting the regular noise bridge Jitsi. Um, uh, but I definitely um, uh, think that um, um uh, uh, the community now has a place where they can meet on the web. Although during our Tuesday meetings, which are now being hosted digitally, we're going to probably keep having to have those in one of our um, community members' Zoom Pro accounts because we were crashing this account at 18 people. Whereas the meeting la on Tuesday night had over 40 people in it. Um, we have the discuss forums, which people can join um, to see what people are doing or join our Slack. Um, Um, uh, also just follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch, which are currently our most active, 
social media accounts. Um, you're, if you're watching this, you're watching it either on YouTube or Twitch, so you already know about those. We'll try to keep posting events during the um, shelter in place on those channels as well as um, keep people informed about all these situations that are happening. Um, any other questions? I don't think so. Uh, did Carl's gone. <laughs> I was curious if he hopped in because he wanted to do a five minute talk or not. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, thank you for hosting this, Ryan. You're welcome. Really yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. I'm starting to get decently comfortable live streaming to Twitch and YouTube. Um, and this seemed to work pretty well overall. I do think I could have better bandwidth, though, but the right now I'm splitting the bandwidth of this with the bandwidth for uploading the stream at the same time. So that's a bit of a issue. I only have about 10 megs upload, whereas NoiseBridge has synchronized upload download like i've gotten like 500 meg upload at noise bridge sometimes which is really really nice because i can just set all the settings on streams to be infinite bandwidth and um although i youtube and facebook and twitch don't support nearly enough high bandwidth settings yet like high frame rate like i can record and stream at 144 frames per second 4k hdr but um nowhere can play that back currently which is kind of sad um but i do think will be able to do this again and maybe do it for other events. I'd love to see if we can do this for the comedy show in a couple weeks. Um, the comedy show would be on um, Saturday, April 4th um, would be the next comedy night um yeah so there's not much else i can think of what do right. people have anything they want to talk about now since I'd it's say just, uh, i'd say just keep people posted uh on the uh dis discuss and such about what kind of events are going to be happening here on Jitsi or wherever online. Cool. Yeah. Any other comments? It, it's that. Uh, I could just tweak NoiseBridge URL. So just say NoiseBridge Game Jam, right? Me, Jitsi, NoiseBridge Game Jam, right? Heck yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Carl, since you joined, do you have a five-minute presentation you want to give to the world? <laughs> well, my original five minutes of fame presentation was supposed to involve the flash and passion and being physically in the space. So, <laughs> um, But next time, I'm going to put my portable flash and passion behind me. I just didn't have time to set it up tonight. Cool. Yeah, then uh, that that will be cool. For people who mm. don't know, flash and passion is Noise Bridge's beer bottle LED display wall. 
And for anyone who finds it kind of funny, it's mainly made out of Corona bottles. I did had to mention that. Um, uh, but... Charles, can you make a game for Flash and Toshin? Yeah, the idea was yeah, I was Carl, make a game. making a a um a snake. It was a snake game that I didn't finish, but it <laughs> you're supposed to be at the space yeah. and be able to all play at the same time. But maybe I can work. Maybe it'll work remotely. It's just gonna take me some time to get it going. So <laughs> yeah, Blinken likes in Berlin had a pong. Sorry, I'm talking over you. Oh, I just wanted to say that Blinken Lights in Berlin, where they did the same thing with Flash and Tashin, but with a whole uh, high rise, they had Pong. So you saw that, right? Somebody made a Pong, ver a Pong version when we first uh, displayed it at the Maker Fair. Someone re remotely developed Pong, so it's up on the GitHub somewhere. Yeah, um, I'm about to share. Um, uh, a picture of Flash and Toshin. Um, so for those who don't know what we're talking about, um, this is actually it playing Pong back at um, Maker Fair 2017, I think. I don't think your screen share is working. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, I there. I was, um, yeah, okay, so, um, yeah, um, yeah, this is Flash and Toshin playing, um, Pong, um, blah, 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 e yeah, um, I'm not seeing it on my screen, but I'm seeing it on Twitch, <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's, um, this is actually the full Flash and Toshin board. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yep, so Coronita and Modelo's are the diagonals, while Corona are the main bottles. Um, I'm not seeing anything. Oh man, I'm the only one without a cat. <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah still flush and toshin's really Bye. cool oh yeah let me go grab Sorry, my, my cat. cat wait my just cat a sec um let me hide I, I had to let Oop. my cat in <laughs> he was Oop. um yeah uh Oop. okay um let me grab my cat who's sitting right next to me. Um, everyone show their cat on screen. Hey, Rosie. Yeah, my cat won't let me have a meeting alone. <laughs> Coconut says hi. Meow. Rosie, say your cat. <laughs> Milo. <laughs> I should this sec Yeah, so everyone <laughs> Mark has a picture of a cat. Yeah. Well played. Clearly the cutest one. <laughs> Nothing can beat a kitten. Yeah. Yeah, so we all have cats. Except for Mark. Yeah. Roki, you're on stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah so tonight was the five minutes of fame cat night um 
next time we need to have everyone who has a dog show up on stream. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyone else have anything they want to say before we end the stream? I miss noise bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I think a lot of people do. I'm good. I guess stay tuned on the website and we'll keep talking online. Thanks for having us. Hey everyone, uh Thanks again. Go, go out to a park. <laughs> I would suggest going out and oh, yeah. uh, getting some I went nature. Out today. Everyone then, should go out to the park. You can still do that. Uh do it by this weekend cuz I have a rumor that it, we they they might start limiting travel. <laughs> I hope not, but um, just in case. Yeah, yeah. Um, for people who are outside of the Bay Area, get ready because the Bay Area is not the only place that's going to be shelter in place very soon. I've heard people discussing it at many different cities around the U.S. Um, and um, also, be relaxed. We are not going to run out of food or toilet paper or stuff unless people keep overbuying it. We aren't, we're a major supply country. We supply the world with a lot of stuff. And a lot of those critical things are still being worked on. We, it's more that people who need it can't get a hold of it because it's bought out way too quickly. Like, be relaxed. I, I know a lot of places do not have as much, um, uh prepping culture as the bay area um and la and a lot of california cities and towns do because of our earthquakes and fire um dangers as well as tsunami dangers um though i do know that a lot of the um gulf has a lot of people who know how to prep L look online uh, on how to prep in your area. Find out what f foods in your area are easy to get hold of fresh or um, without having to deal with having to go to large stores all that often. Because going to a store right now is pretty high risk um and um also go at off peak times if you have a 24 hour walmart or safeway or whatever go at 2 or 3 a.m that's when i usually go and um they are restocking all the stuff they sold out of so i usually can buy Stuff like it, if I don't need any, but I could buy boxes of toilet paper because they're restocking it. Um, but they run out of most things in most SF stores pretty early in the afternoon. So if you know when they restock certain things, go during that time. Um, but also. Only have one person in your family go out and buy stuff, and only do it every couple of days. There's just a lot of prep that people can do, and there's a lot of good information online if you look at trustworthy sources like the CDC and actual university medical response listings um but there's also a lot of bad information a lot of major tv and um 
news websites have a lot less accurate information than um a lot of the medical professional websites do so look around you will find lots of conflicting information about stuff but just relax well the u.s will get through this the world will get through this it's it's going to be an interesting couple months. Um, but also know that we have the internet. You can still communicate with people. You can game online. You can uh, read a book. You There's actually not that much that you need to go out to do um right now um that you can't just do at home um uh, it's like we want people to stay safe and healthy and that's the whole goal of the current shelter in place is to help everyone um so please follow the rules and uh, um We'll all get through this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, if you are healthy, help out your community. Community. There's lots of places like food banks that need a lot of help right now. Um, uh, or if you are someone who decided to hoard masks, Please donate some of those to some medical facilities near you because they, I guarantee, need a lot more of them than you ever will as an individual. Um, also because the masks are for the people who are sick or have a... Um, because this um pandemic it you don't just need you, there's a lot of ways to get this current b virus so just stay safe we'll all get through this and we'll keep having events like this online till we can do them in person again but also we'll probably start streaming more of our in-person events so that people in other communities and around the world can watch stuff like this. Um, yeah, thank you all for joining. Does anyone have any final comments for the community? Okay, thank you all for joining 5 Minutes of Fame at Not Noise Bridge tonight, um, March 2020. Join us next month on uh, March, uh, I mean, April, oh wait, yeah, April, yep. 16th um at 8 p.m for the next five minutes of fame it might happen at noise bridge it might happen online it might happen in both but it probably will not happen at neither have a nice night and hack the planet <laughs>